Next presenter is Mr. Kim Mi-gon, researcher of Department of Income Security Policy of the Korea Institute for Health and Social Affairs. Definitely Mr. Kim is one of the experts who knows the uh, social uh, environment of Korea best. So Mr. Kim, please. As the moderator just introduced, uh, I am Kim Mi-gon. Uh, I am on uh, researchers of the Department of Income Security Policy of the Korea Institute for Health and Social Affairs. The institute is uh, working on research of social affairs, demographics, and health uh, policies. So those are the three major areas that we are researching on. Today, I'd like to talk about social policy paradigm and direction in the post-COVID-19 era. So what kind of paradigm shift should we make? And what is the direction for the futures in terms of social policy? So these will be explained by me during my presentation. What is the uh, root cause of a pandemic? So that was already expl explained by the previous speakers. And this is often cited that it, uh, what is often cited is that a pandemic is uh, caused by environmental destructions and growth-centered views, materialism and fetishisms are causing environmental destruction. As stated by Mr. Noam Chomsky, a pandemic is not a natural disaster but a man-made one. And second thing that I want to talk about to you is in the post-COVID-19 era, what changes will we see? In fact, a pandemic is inflicting an economic crisis, and that leads to a crisis to communities. And when that happens, the general public usually express a diverse demand and needs, and the intellectuals, they demand for a paradigm shift. So this is a general flow. Uh, so I'd like to talk about this. And first, as for epidemic, epidemic is a, uh, we are moving for, we are moving uh, from uh, the epidemic to pandemic. Just one or two months ago, there were people uh, who doubt uh, that uh, the COVID-19 will go into pandemic. Uh, but my, so now, actually, people are seeing that uh, the COVID-19 is going into an endemic. So there are questions concerning whether the COVID-19 will become an endemic or not. But now it's coming as um, an endemic. So uh, when it comes to economic crisis, there are three levels, three steps. But now we have entered into the second step. Uh, in the stage of epidemic, social distancing is practiced. In fact, the social distancing is not the accurate word. Actually, I would say physical distancing. So under epidemic, physical distancing is practiced, causing harms and difficulties to small business owners and to the vulnerable. And uh, step two is pandemic. So step two, uh, under the uh, second step uh, crisis, there is a crisis to the manufacturing industry. And in uh, step three, that crisis goes into the financial sector as well. And now I think that we are, we have just entered the step two. There are many uh, opinions about economic recovery, but V-shaped growth or U-shaped growth. However, such things cannot be expected at this stage. One of the most positive prospects that, can, that we can make at best is that the economy will recover in the shape of Ni Nike Swoosh logo. However, it depends on uh, the development of the crisis, uh, the pandemic. So in which kind of crisis we are in can be referred to several years ago. Because uh, several years ago, when we had a global financial crisis, the economic growth rate was negative 6%. However, now it is getting worse to negative 7.6%. 
Disaster. A disaster has unequal effect. However, at the same time, it is serving as a foundation for social transformation. Uh, as seen in the case of the Black Plague, uh, it offered the opportunity uh, in the medieval times to shift away from the medieval time to the modern times. And when the Spanish flu came in in 1980, the Europe and the US saw 0.5% or 1% of their population die. But India, the death rate was 6%. Amid COVID-19, 70% of those who died of COVID-19 are African Americans. And in uh, at the time of the financial crisis in 1998, financial crisis, the vulnerables are hit earlier and harder for, much, for much a much longer period of time. So this is about how the world will change uh, in the post-COVID-19 era. I think that it depends on the extent of change. And these are the extracts from the news report. So before corona and after disease. So it's a shift from BC to AD. So this is this is, uh, is a thing that I have extracted from the newspaper reports. So uh, there used to be materialisms and uh, memonisms, but I really hope that in, uh, from the post-COVID-19 pandemic era or the crisis, I hope that people can reflect on themselves, you know, thinking, uh, looking back on what has happened in the past, environmental destructions, and so on. So, uh, but at the moment, in order to tackle the situations, governments around the world are providing funds in order to relieve uh, people from the burden of the COVID-19 uh, situation. And deglobalization is going on in this uh, post-COVID-19 era, but we need to think about Thodysus trap. So G2, there were G2s and it's two powerful countries. And uh, so there was a shift from G2 and G1. And so in the past, when you look at the history, there used to be two superpowers, but after uh, waging wars, um, we ended up having G1, just one superpower, for example. So there is a war in between on emerging power and super, uh, established superpower. So what direction we need to take for the future in terms of social policy? Growth only or growth centered mindset brought about the pandemic. But now we need to move away from that mindset. Now we need to set an objective in terms of government administration, putting happiness first rather than growth. And secondly, what matters most is that so far over the years, we just put a focus on economic growth. So in terms of the per capita GDP, Korea ranked 29th among the OECD countries. However, when you take a look at the social and environmental indicators, Korea is in bad shape all too often. So it is very important to strike a balance and make a harmony between social, economic, and environmental sustainability. So that would be the desirable uh, state. And uh, this is the third point. I'd like to talk about the golden quadrangle model. So uh, the golden quadrangle model is needed in these times. When we uh, take a look at the past policies, the economic, labor, and welfare policies were um, introduced and implemented in a separate manner. That's why we could not achieve the desired outcome. For example, as for labor policy, we generated many irregular workers. However, uh, in terms of welfare policy, uh, we, uh, the government, emphasized on um, providing benefits. So the two were sometimes were in conflict with each other. So we need to take a like a integrated and more consistent approach for economic labor and welfare policies rather than a fragmented approach. And I'd like to move on to the next topic. So we need to establish a society that is based on low cost 
And a uh, low cost society was talked about a previous speaker, a uh, National Assembly man, Mr. Lee. Uh, and as time goes by, the desires and the needs are growing exponentially. However, in order to meet the desires and needs, we need a lot of resources. However, we don't see an increase in resources much. So this is uh, based on a hypothetical situation. For example, when we take a look at the uh, lowest income people and they are uh, subject to the national basic livelihood subsidy or the insurance program. But these days, uh, primary school students, if they don't have smartphones, they cannot you know, go on uh, their life these days. And their desire is to have smartphones. However, um, even if there is a desire, but that desire cannot be met if they don't have resources. And this kind of deficiency issue is related to the social issue. In order to tackle the problem, historically, nations uh, were uh, focused on extending welfare policies and introducing many other uh, measures, like you know, forming cooperatives. So that was the previous approach. However, we need to think outside of the box. Why don't we think of uh, creating a society where needs and desires are low, lower than now? For example, we are spending a lot of costs and a lot of money on uh, private education. But what about a society with no private education? That indicates that it is the society with low levels of desires and low levels of needs. The same goes to the medical cost. So we are sometimes in Korea spending medical costs in a too excessive manner. In order to provide high level of welfare benefits, people are saying that we need to spend a lot of money. It makes sense in some cases. And having more doctors in the current situation can be one of the options. However, at the same time, we need to think about how to build a society with low costs. That means that less numbers of uh, diseases instead of having more doctors in the current situation. And this is the medical cost situations of the United States. And please compare the numbers between countries, um, the United States, Korea. In the COVID-19, Post-era, in the post-COVID-19 era, so what approach should we make? Even if we spend less money, we will be able to establish a better society if we uh, take a different approach. This is about the establishment of the inclusive welfare system. As for inclusiveness, this is what I'm thinking. The former president, Do Muihan, maybe I need to skip this part. But uh, the president knows that, that the river water goes continuously into the seawater. But uh, from that point of view, sea does not distinct, distinguish river water from seawater, whether it is dirty water or clean water. Actually, sea, the sea actually is inclusive of the river water. And that's the concept of inclusiveness, in my view. So this mechanism is needed for making a virtual cycles between consumption, investment, and uh, job numbers, and so on. And uh, this is about uh, the inequality indexation tax. And inequality indexation tax was argued by, claimed by uh, Mr. Robert Schiller. So uh, Mr. Schiller is a Nobel laureate. According to his theory, so we need to make a linkage between uh, the income inequality to taxation. If the income inequality goes up, that means that a more heavier tax taxation should be given. Taxation should be imposed to the companies, for example. So uh, depending on the level of income inequality, tax can be different according to his theory. And another thing is uh, the one that I thought of, expanding the social value-based tax system.
Once a society evolves, there are some jobs that are gone away, and there are jobs that are created. So there will be more jobs that will be lost rather than, than the number of jobs that will be created. So this is what I thought. Why don't we expand the social value based tax system? That means that the companies who hire more workers, they are given with the tax cut benefits so that companies' profit can be about the same after either paying wages or paying tax. And I'd like to move on to the next one. What should be the direction for social policy in the post-COVID-19 era? So there is a national insurance policy for all the citizens. So recently, according to the announcement of the government, they introduced that they announced that they would implement the Korean-style New Deal policy. I think that actually in an ideal situation, economic, environmental, and social sustainability should be in a balance. In order to enhance the quality of lives, the sustainability between economy, environment, and society needs to be guaranteed. For social sustainability, we need human New Deal, not just New Deal policy. What I mean by human New Deal is the extension of employment safety net as well as the uh, safety, uh, social safety net. So digital New Deal and the Green New Deal actually are weighed heavily. But having the national insurance systems for the, all of the citizens of the nation is probably may not be proper consideration. So in order to establish a Korean style New Deal, I think we need to adopt the idea of human New Deals based on the combination of employment safety net and social safety net. When it comes to social safety net, we should guarantee the income for the A's. So that's why I'd like to argue for reorganizing the income security system for the aged. At the moment, we are in a situation where um, we are uh, on the train of snow, snow piercer, just like the movie. So uh, there, are, there are more luxurious cars uh, in the train, and there are less luxurious cars in the train at the, at the back. So within this current system, so we cannot guarantee the age, the income security. So that's why absolutely there is a need to reorganize the income security systems for the nation. And secondly, we need to introduce the benefits related to the sickness and the injury. Among 36 countries um, in OECD, only the U.S. and the uh, Korea are not adopting the sickness and injury allowances. In Korea, the sickness and injury allowances is not in place. For example, those who are working on site at coupon and at uh, delivery companies like that. So if, even if they are sick, they cannot make ends meet. That's why, uh, because they are not given uh, any benefits like the sickness and injury benefits. That's why, you know, even if they seek, they keep working and working. So we need to introduce a sickness and injury allowances to Korea. And when we think about the situation of working moms, uh, they uh, have difficulties. Uh, especially when their children are prim primary school uh, students, like especially the graders from one to three. So we need to think about introducing children's allowances for primary school one and two and three graders. And this is the last part. So what should be the direction for social policy for the future? What I want to make a suggestion here is that there are people who are falling into the category of special employment. I think that it is desirable for them to be part of the um, employment insurance because employment insurance is part of the social security uh, systems. But at the moment, those who fall into the category of special occupation, they are not insured of employment 
insurance of the nation. And you can think of the uh, government officials and, and uh, the government officials are questioning me whether it is right to be insured of the insurance system for um, employment. But I think that this is the right way to go. And this is the last part of my presentation. Rather than quality of jobs, our first priority should be improve the number of jobs. So job sharing or extension of jobs in the public sector can be thought of. And these are the things that we need to work on. So at the moment, in this current situation, rather than increasing the quality of jobs, we need to focus on increasing the number of jobs. Thank you for listening. Thank you, the research fellow, Kim mi Gon. So what should be the direction, the social policy of Korea uh, for the future was well presented by your presentation.